All right. We're live. Oh, I was just scratching my nose. <laughs> right. Let's do this. Okay. Well, hello and welcome to NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Mariam. Hello. I'm Rowan. And I'm Mariam. Sorry. A few little bits and bobs have to be gotten out of the way. Logistical problems. Right. Are just as common as relationship problems. <laughs> Right, so, um, shall I introduce myself? That would be great. Okay, so my name is Rowan. Um, I just moved back to London two months ago after living abroad for two years. Um, I spent most of that time in Vienna where I became a semi-famous queer feminist stand-up comedian. But I've since come back to London and rediscovered that contrary to, you know, my expectations of myself to be very queer and cool, I do also like men. Which has been a blow, but I'm working through it, and you're going to have to work through it with me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm Mariam. Um, I've had long, long-term long relationships, short-term relationships, hookups, disasters, deep loves, and I feel like there's we are all so oppressed, we don't talk about it enough. And this is sort of our idea of really opening up that kind of worms with love and empathy. Yeah, because, you know, like, you might expect that, like, because our love lives aren't perfect or we're not entirely emotionally stable, we shouldn't be doing this. But actually, I think we're that's exactly the type of people you do want to be having these conversations with. People who don't have all the answers but want to help and offer their perspective. And on things that often, if you ask in spaces, you get ridiculed or you're scared you might phrase it wrong. And while we want to make it clear that we want this to be, like, a space where, like, you know, there's, like, no sex and race and homophobia, transphobia, all the bad things. If we fuck up, please let us know in on Twitter or in any other way because we want to do better and, yeah. Yes, and, you know, sometimes we get so-called experts like Jordan Peterson thinking that they have it all and they know it all and he's now advising on relationships and Jesus Christ, it just shows how, as the left, we've really, again, abandoned the space uh, on talking about emotions and sex and relationships that we have people like Jordan Peterson doing that and men listening about that. Um, yeah, and we've sort of really talked in the past couple of months with people about um, this project and everyone just really thought, like, how come no one's doing this? Yeah, not, not from the leftist perspective. So we figured we'll be those people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're so thankful for all of the questions that you sent in. They've mm -hmm. been so wonderful. We're so humbled. Uh, yeah. So before we get into those, um, a few things. I uh, Basically, yeah, I, I want to get a bit of my beer and I also want to check that our stream is going well. This is a very low budget situation, right? Like it's there's no one. Room. Yeah. And there's no one behind the camera. So I need to check a few things. Bear with us. And yeah, we're going to kick off with the questions. Yeah. Like, you have them on your phone. and all I do. Yeah. Okay, okay. So awesome. you do faffing. Yes. And I'm you do drinking. You, I'm going to tell you a joke that I came up with a few days ago that I did Google. It turns out other people have already thought of it, but I also thought of it. And it is what do you call someone who doesn't believe in evolution? A primate change denier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a stand-up comedian anymore. So now I'm just looking at the live stream. It seems like we're a bit cut off, so perhaps we should be like, it's not really. If you like actually put it horizontally, you'll see us. But we might just like squeeze in a little bit. Oh, yeah. So that you see. It's an beautiful. intimate environment. Yes, of course. Um, then, then, not sponsored by BrewDog yet, but I should be. So bring it. Though really, we're now, um, you know, we're not drinking the Tisky that we should be drinking as part of our Clapton uh, brand. But there we go. Mm. Okay. All right, let's do this. So the way that we're going to do this yep. is um, uh, one of us will read out the question, then the other one... Wait, I read out the first question, don't sure. I? And then you will start answering, and then we'll sort of bounce off and see what happens. Yeah, this is a first for us too. And by the way, if you want to send in any questions... Um, there is a Curious Cat <laughs> link in between my, all of my tweets, and yeah, you can do it live as well at the same time if you wish, or comment on all of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, we're going to try and keep you entertained, so we may not necessarily be um, you know, watching at the same time, so bear with us. But you know, let's just hang out tonight. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. And there's going to be two more episodes on yeah. subsequent two Tuesdays, so if your question doesn't get answered tonight... It will. Yeah, yeah. And if, like, this is not as coherent or something, or the first time around, then we'll definitely, like, we'll see how it goes next time around, and it'll all be, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, um, thank you again so much for sending in this question. Um, 
uh, again, we're just really, really amazed that people were so generous with their sort of emotions yes. and, and thoughts. And thank you so much. Okay, yeah, thank so you let's for try. Trusting us. Yeah. We hope we deserve it. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. Also, we have not discussed the questions in advance, so. Yeah. These are our first rounds of re reactions, so I have no idea what Rowan's going to say for no, instance. Me neither. Yeah. Okay, right. So, question for NHS. Cis head dude, I've struggled a bit with dating the last few years. At 23, I'm a late starter for various reasons. I'm a British Romani and only started dating non-travelers a few years ago, but whatever. And I'm a sufferer of generalized, general anxiety disorder. I've gotten great f at first dates, learning to dress like a grown man helped, get plenty of second ones, but tend to get overexcited and overthink things when it comes to second or potential third date, and rather understandably this is putting women off. I start second guessing how I should be progressing things, showing interest but not too much interest, text in between dates, etc. I'm getting better at it every time and know I'll get there eventually with experience, but any tips? Well, a beautiful question. Yeah, really, thank you so much for bringing that to us, um, and I hope we can be helpful. So, my first thing is, well done on getting loads of first dates, because you're doing better than I did at 23. Um, <laughs> believe you me. And, obviously, this is the kind of irritating thing to say, but, obviously, there's no one-size-fits-all on how to progress with second and third dates. One thing I would say that, like, I personally don't like is, like, the game playing where they like, oh, I don't want to respond straight away, so I'm going to strategically wait two hours before I respond, or two days even, and I'm like, allow that shit. If you're on the bus and you're bored, text me back. The worst that happens is I'm busy and I don't text you back. So, like, like not nah, nah to playing games and just, like, respond if you want to. Having said that, responding or sending several messages in a row when you haven't received something or like, hey, 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 how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Bit of a turn off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first, uh, uh, I think I have some notes. I'm so sorry. Uh, I forgot to take them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Got them. Whoa, shit. No, no, no. That's just my sad notes about boys. That's not oh, at all. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, that I have not prepared oh, enough for oh, this. Oh, actually, not on this question. Okay, right. So, first of all, can I just say, I, I've so been you. I have so been this guy. And I really thought that, like, at 27 now, I am not that guy anymore. And yet, just the past couple of months I spent, don't send him paragraphs, don't send him paragraphs, don't send him paragraphs. Yep. So, I don't know how to say, you are not alone in this. I have so been that guy, and, and I think most of us have been, yes. and it's so wonderful that you're even trying to tackle this, but yet, I don't know, I think this is definitely part of a journey of dating, and it's just really, it's, it's just, it, yeah, whenever you develop an interest in someone, you, you obviously just want to hear from, back from them, etc. Yes. So I also really, really agree, and that's something I also thought about. It's like, you only live once. If someone's playing games, fuck them. Yes. Honestly, and seriously, and I know this sounds like a bit, oh, you know, but what if they're the one in that? But like, I don't know. Honestly, when I think of my long-term relationships and that, oh, you know, pe people that have lasted for years, you knew when they're into you, right? And like, when years go by, it just becomes boring to like, second guess and all yeah. of that stuff. In terms of more practical advice, uh, what I found is perhaps a bit more of use is instead of asking perhaps, oh, just how are you or how your day is, which is also very lovely and you should definitely be asking questions. But uh, hard to answer imaginatively sometimes when your day is yes. fine and you're still fine. Like, yeah, yeah. It can perhaps, create a boring situation. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. I was thinking perhaps send a useful articles or like memes or something like that that would be just like actual content yep. and something of use that would be relating back to the date and be like oh oh i saw this and i thought of you today or something like that yes i agree with that but also like i've been in situations <laughs> <laughs> like i send memes to people all the time i'm 100 guilty of that but also if that's your only means of communication getting sent memes where you say haha and then sent another meme where you say, ha ha. It needs, to be mi it needs to be a mix. Articles that like relate to them or you think are interesting, fantastic. Then a funny meme that reminds you of them, fantastic. But also make sure you're getting, if not the same responses, because I'm, for example, I send a lot of selfies to people and I don't get that many back. I don't care. I'm going to still send them selfies. <laughs> <laughs> I look hot. I mean, you that look day. hot. And, That's you know, it, yeah. yeah. But like, so it doesn't have to be give and take, but kind of see the kind of content they're sending you as well to a degree. 
Yeah. Like, say you send them a selfie, but then they feel insecure, so they send you a picture of their dog. Fine, they're still sharing, you know, like... Yeah. Another thing that I also picked out from your question, and this is just the general advice I'd give any lefty, like, of any gender, the fact that you in invested some money into, like, fitted clothes, alleluia. Honest... Anyone who pretends they're not attracted to, like, aesthetics to at least a tiny degree is either fucking impressive and I wish I was as pure as you, or lying. Yes, but also, like, there is style and there are good clothes, but something to me is about fitted clothes, you know? Clothes that, like, is the, are the right size for you, you know? Like, I don't know, that turn, that turn, yeah, that's beautiful. And mm -hmm. so the fact that you've definitely sorted that out. I mean, again, we are very, we're caveating all of this that everyone has different tastes. Yes. 100%, 100%. We are more than understanding that. And if there is like a reason to our project is to uh, also explain the fact that we also have that very different. We have totally different tastes. We have that very different tastes. We yeah. should have actually probably even started yeah, with this. Like, I mean, aesthetically, I like woolly jumpers. You like? I like, I like. I like. I like matching dudes. I'm putting it out of the. I, I'm putting it out of. The, uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I like. I like nerdy, suits and all floppy that. dudes. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. So the, the you could yeah the same dude wouldn't we wouldn't like the same dude. No, thank and, God, that's why we're still friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also like the style. What whenever we talk about style, obviously not stylish people fucking get so late as well and that's kind of not what, yes, we're, no. what we're saying I mean actually well, the type I like isn't really stylish by today's standards so. yeah but I guess but for like first dates I guess that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a good idea and sort of like yeah okay I'm now talking from my perspective fuck it like fuck the caveats I think something to be said yeah about like a pair of trousers that like fits your like waist really well or like yeah a jumper that like just you can tell that it was done sort of with the thought of it fitting your body sort of thing like to me that's beautiful and um uh, I don't know, it just sounds to me like whatever it is that, if you're not getting that third date or whatever, it seems like it's, it's, a, it's a girl's problem. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing, because what you said about like, when it's the one you know... Well, no, maybe you're, you're a creep, creep. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's also that, like, don't harass women. Yes, Caveat exactly. Shouldn't have to do yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, it, if she wants to respond to you, she will, and like, yeah, when it's someone you know, it's, you know when someone's interested in you and... Also, give it time. Like, I had a phase, um, a fun ex social experiment I did about three years ago, where I said yes to every guy on OkCupid that wanted to go on a date with me. And it was, quite frankly, astonishing how many of them, after having a very awkward, stilted hour of conversation, were like, I really think we've connected. And I was like, no, you don't. Like, no, we just didn't. And so it's like, also, don't push a connection that isn't there if you like someone. I don't know if you are doing that, but it, yeah. Like... Yeah, but also we... Okay, another little more practical advice, I guess. At the end of the day, perhaps ask, would it be okay to text to you, you know? What sort of content would you like to be texted to, you know? So that's in terms of, like, um, you, you know, not feeling guilty that you're even messaging, because then you get into that sort of vortex, you know, or, like, circle, where, like, ooh, I feel guilty that I even yes. said anything, that sort of thing. And that, that makes you feel insecure. And insecurity can turn someone off as well so basically yeah sort of try not to get into a space where you even are feeling insecure about your actions you always have to feel sort of i guess confident enough obviously don't be cocky and all of that stuff but like don't fall yeah. into that but also if you do we both have it's a oh, thing oh yeah, like, yeah 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 the yeah. amount of people i've texted continually yeah like, yeah yeah and with no no yeah nothing it's <laughs> like <laughs> so yeah again just always always bring it back to like you are so not the only person in this we are so with you another like little practical thing i thought is like um so I don't, this is actually gonna look sad i can actually show this to you this this is my diary and i write things down basically my emotions my thoughts this is not really like the i guess practical what should i do a live sort of diary maybe then i would have a career by now but it's really just you know just if i'm thinking of of of, of a person of a particular state in my life doesn't have to be a, you know a, 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 a relationship could be could be a friendship or whatnot i try and write things down and actually that makes me sort of really map my feelings and also think about what I don't necessarily even like in that relationship and and also stops me from writing to them as well you know so I have yeah. found like really very very analog writing down sorts me out personally or you can be like me and just repress everything and deny you have any issues and play sad songs on piano until you make yourself cry <laughs> yes 
again, there's a spectrum of the way of dealing with things, but <laughs> we offered a few. Yeah, and like the uh, one final bit of practical advice about the texting thing is just like instead of having incessant small talk, just ask when you can next see them, because that will get you an answer either way pretty solidly. What about voice notes as well? Ooh, with people, okay, with people I've just met, I find voice quite stressful. Like, I was dating someone recently who might be listening, and they wanted to call me on Christmas, and I felt very overwhelmed by this because I was like, I can't hear your voice in the middle of a vortex. No, calling, like, sure, because then you have to respond to that. But, you know, maybe a bit of voice note of like, oh, I just went past this, and I just thought of you. Like, perhaps there's something a bit more connecting to that. I think it's, I, I love voice notes, but I personally find them I personally find them like quite a big thing if I'm not very comfortable with someone but again this is a thing we're like totally yeah, different in yeah. this way so but yeah so you're trying it either way <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like basically try it like and see yeah because actually with my I'm now remembering my girlfriend I had in the summer she, I sent her a voice note of me trying to pronounce something in Spanish and she was like you have such a sexy voice and it was like Yes. And then yes. I was in because she really liked my voice, which she wouldn't have known if I hadn't sent her a voice note. So yes, I must say half of the stuff, half of the reason I like certain people, the way the reason that why I like them is voice temper or accent or something like that. And she'd be like, mm. hearing the voice. <laughs> yeah, voice is a turn on or a turn off, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. No, but again, not for everyone. All of yeah, that stuff. Everyone has sure. a different voice taste. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and I, I don't know. I think, as Rowan said very, very correctly, you're doing way better than we did mm -hmm. at 23. <laughs> like, honestly, and you're already saying that you're getting better every time. I don't know. Like, again, at the end of the day, I will say, don't waste your time on just waste girls. Yep. Like, it's not worth it. And really, confidence does come with, with age, and like, you will definitely. I don't know. I think you will feel like you don't have to chase those people anymore. Um, but yeah. Or you might end up still doing this when you're 30, and to be honest, yes, I know a lot of people okay like that too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God. I said our caveats. No, but yeah. you know, like, it's really just to say that there's not one way of doing things. But yeah. um, but hopefully we gave some tips. That yeah, might be a useful. few tips. We yeah, did. I think we did. We did. Yeah, I it think we confident. did. Yeah, yeah. And if you have any follow-up questions on that, please, yeah. please, again, contact us uh, on the Curious Cat. And also, um, yeah, if you have also, you can fill us in with 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 your how it's going, dates, yeah, yeah and all of, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, man. Like I believe in you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'm going to do another uh, check of the stream, and then I will ask you to check the. Then I'll read the next question. Yeah, you'll read the next question. Um, okay. Hi, if you've just tuned in... Wait, this is, oh, yeah, yeah, do that, do is, that, uh, yeah. Hi, if you've just tuned in, this is um, NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Mariam. Mariam is currently doing a technology check, and I don't know how to do that stuff, so I'm going to talk at the camera while she's busy. Six viewers! Way! <laughs> <laughs> We're drinking to you. Woohoo! Wait, I think there's a way for it to like tweet out. Wait, is it only me in the no, video? No, because I'm I'm bending down. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good, all good, all good. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Oh, okay. Just one moment. Okay. I think there is a way for. Um, I'm just gonna sort of tweet how that is, this is all happening. Can keep us entertained. Perhaps yeah, talk okay. about the structure of the next couple of weeks or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there's gonna be two more shows over the next two weeks. Um, uh, these are my granddad's curtains. I think they're really beautiful. Um, we've both got very uh, aesthetic chairs. Um, I don't like IPA, but Mariam does. This is just like our taste in men, you know, so it's fine. <laughs> We're hoping audio is alright. I'd like to think you'd be tweeting at us if it wasn't. Eleven viewers! Woohoo! Hey! <laughs> awesome. Okay. Are you ready for the second yes, question? Yes, yes, yes. I'm just going to do this. So this question is very exciting for me, and I think for Mariam also, oh. because... <laughs> well, spoiler alert, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Sorry? I said spoiler alert, because I'm like, we're both excited oh, by yeah, this. Oh, No, no, we're excited about all, all of them. them. <laughs> but this is something I think and talk about, we think and talk about. So I'm leaning in because I'm sort of like, like making us into a square. I think if people extend the image, then it's both of us, oh, but yeah, yeah. on a little preview, it's just the sort of the two of us. Anyways. Okie dokie. So, Anon asked, 
Despite all my experiences telling me that it's very common for comrades and or women to be interested in playing with power and consent in a fantasy setting, I can't shake a deep sense of self-doubt about working for no masters on the streets and being called a master in the sheets. Am I a bad feminist slash anarchist person? Probably not, but it's in my head and making a mess of my love life. Advice? Thank you. Burdened dude, burdened dude scared of misogyny. Bam, 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 bam. So this is, I guess, broadly a question about BDSM and dominant and submissive relationships, whether that's, well, relationships or in bed. Yeah, encounters. Encounters and what it means to be a good feminist and still engage in those acts. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there are two sides to it. I'll start with the more funny one where um, you find a, a lot of... <laughs> Dudes that go, yeah, man, like, I'm the dom. I'm going to, like, pin you down and do all these things to you. You get to it. And there's nothing. I literally have to, like, do all the work. Yeah, yeah. And that's really annoying. Yeah, so basically, the, what I will say, don't make the, don't ever make those promises if you can't deliver. Yeah, don't number hype, one. like, Number one. Much. No, because, like, we believe in you and what fools we are. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> That's such so, a good point. No, someone could be good at like sexting and all yeah. that, and then like I'm still it. It's just like, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with not being good at BDSM. Sure, but exactly. Don't lie. You're letting everyone down. So I think one thing that we have in common is that we, yeah, we're subs. Yeah, we're Hi, subs. Mom, if you're watching. <laughs> Shit, I haven't thought about it. No, but okay, all good. Uh, well, um, can we just add that this is not safe for work? Unless you work in a very sex positive environment, in which case, can we work with you? Yeah, mm -hmm. we should have probably done this at the beginning, yeah. but anyways, is is what it is, and that uh, we both enjoy it. Well, we're both subs. BDSM. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And that's something that I guess we share. And um, but not with each other. I think I have, I have this uh, secret. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> well, I have this secret theory that uh, oh, we I told you. Oh, we into the secret theory. Well, no, but uh, j even before we get into the actual question as such, I mean, I don't know. I think it's interesting though. So yeah. I have this theory where I think that actually everyone is secretly a sub. Now we'll probably get a lot of tweets at me being like, -ra -ra -ra. yeah, erasing people's sexuality. Yeah, no, but I don't know. I I met way too many. Uh, self-proclaimed dom that like definitely like when the roles are reversed like they don't go back sort of thing and mm -hmm. they're like damn it <laughs> it's annoying so but anyways um right so um how can they not feel bad so okay so that's i sort of the way that i see this is my the same way as I see my broader understanding of anarchy in general so a lot of people understandably um Okay, so uh, some people think that anarchy is chaos, right? It's just like no structure whatsoever, right? I would uh, I would say that it's an attempt at a non-hierarchy, right? And yet um, we and I understand personally that hierarchies will still exist. Some people are just better at certain things than others, you know? Some people are experts at certain things than rather than others, you know? I've been at way too many like student movement meetings where there's 100 people trying to... Uh, think of how to get into that building, you know, whereas actually only 10 people, you know, know how to score the building, you know, but then we have to put like consensus decision for all of those things, you know. But at the same time, skill sharing is a very important part of anarchist practice. Sure. And BDSM practice. Sure, sure, sure. But basically what I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that um, what how, the way that I understand anarchy is that there are certain hierarchies, but they have consent to it. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm arriving at is basically that I, I I think that hierarchies and sort of, uh, I guess, a certain amount, well, I guess acted oppression can be, but like, I don't think it's oppression, but basically understanding that some people are just better at certain things and some people enjoy not doing them is fine. And that's very much part of the way that I understand anarchism personally. And so I think this sort of goes back to bad politics, right? As long as there is consent to whatever the activity there is, that is that should certainly be uh, sort of enabled. And yet, then there is a question of what consent means, right? And do you want to... I wasn't going to talk about consent. No, but I, I mean, suppose... I no, 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 but I suppose, like, um, the word... The, 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 the no word, right? Oh, okay. okay. Okay, but can I do something else before I do that? Absolutely. Okay. So I, like, I used to have this conversation a lot with my ex-boyfriend, who I don't think would mind... Um, 
to me talking about it because I, I was a baby anarchist when we first started dating and pretty much on our first date he said I'm polyamorous and I'm into BDSM and I was like I think you're really cute. So I like went along with it. Um, <laughs> which doesn't sound like the best like fairy tale romance beginning, but actually we were together for three years and had a wonderful, very caring relationship. But I was at the beginning before I knew him, before I'd like read a lot of stuff about BDSM, was very weirded out by the fact that like, yeah, he's a guy and he's a dom and I'm a woman and I'm a sub and what does this mean? And does this mean he has bad politics and this and this and this? And I since like I I've since kind of reconciled with myself that one of the reasons why I'm a sub is because as, like, a woman who is very assertive and quite dominant when in, like, social situations and, like, in the scene and stuff like this, having a space where I can lose, like, lose, not lose control, like, whoo, lose control as in, like, not have the control is, like, a very, very nice thing. And yet... One of the most important principles of BDSM is also that actually, to a very strong degree, the sub does have the control, which is where the consent stuff comes in. And, like, for example, I had a safe word. It was Ricardo. I can't remember which boyfriend this was with, but one of them. Um, safe word Ricardo. And so, like, I don't know how to go into the consent thing. Right. This is tricky, right? But yeah. basically, sometimes fantasies, I guess... Oh, gosh. Look, extend into certain areas, you know? Okay, the broad caveat for general interactions in a bedroom situation. Uh, no means no, enthusiastic yeses mean yes. Fine, absolutely. And with someone you don't know that well, and oh, you haven't yeah. had conversations with, and you've hit on in a nightclub, or whatever, 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 absolutely. fucking lootly Jesus. Yeah. However... Beyond that, this is something that we've just had discussions about and we want to be able to address, but we're, we feel like it's really hard to address this because we do not in any way want to contribute to like rape apologism or any of that shit because no, fuck off. And that's, <laughs> and it's essentially that sometimes you're in a situation, a scene or whatever with a partner and I might, as Rowan here saying, speaking only for myself, be like, no, 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 stop it, no, stop it, as part of the thing I'm playing with someone who understands... It's a character, yeah, yes. That is, my, that is the thing I'm playing, that turns me on, and my safe word is Ricardo. And so I can say, no... And then if I'm like, Ricardo? You don't stop then? You're a rapist. Yeah, you're, you're like, a real rapist, that's that. And, and so this is what I kind of want... Yeah, this is like something that we talk about, and we, yeah. we're really scared to be talking about this right now, to Absolutely. be honest, because... It's a scary thing to talk about because we because the, I guess the sort of the um, we're not trying to um, I don't know if there's an implication that there's an implication perhaps that it's somehow twisted for anyone to 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 even have such fantasy as such you know because that's really dark and I mean. I mean, again, not to say that we've even, like, do this all the time, no, like, no, no, yeah. but people could be, and it's okay, basically, as long as everyone is responding each, responding each other, uh, respecting each other's boundaries, as long as there's communication, and as long as, you know, you know, if someone doesn't respect your safe word, they're rapists, like, that's that, yeah. that's that, but I suppose what we're trying to address, even with this question, is that there, there are certain have nuance. There, like, there's nuance, and there, there are ways to 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 push to push that that uh, that are complicated, that are difficult, that are something to be talked about, but that but, are 100 percent reliant on trust. Yes, and that's I don't know. To me, it's very very encouraging that the person that is even talking, you know, asking this question is 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 addressing the fact that they are the sort of the. Yeah, I guess the dominant, the dominant person, although being, you know, a, 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 a cis man, I, I understand. So um, it's implied, I think. It's implied. I mean, but, burdened dude. So yes. Identifies yes. as a man. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they, I'd like to think that they understand that they just need to do all those communications. And if you're not, like, you just have to get on with that. But, um, but it's also... Fucking like just talking about the fact that as strong feminists we can be subs yeah. and it's okay basically because sub being a sub like implies you're like lazy or whatnot right but I also I'm so in control of so many aspects of my life of everyday survival and running multiple fucking projects and you know and and, and households in the past and and relationships.
relationships and 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 family and friends and like, but but obviously but, but these are just general things. But really, running a lot of projects that like yeah to to lose that control every now and then is great. I'm into it. I'm not ashamed about it, and I don't think we should feel. Bad as like good strong feminists to the fact that we are no. subs basically. Yeah. I guess that's what we're trying to say. And, and as long as there are dudes that are willing to perform the dominant, uh, I suppose, side of things in a in a confident, communicative, empathetic manner, that is something to celebrate. And this is the other thing I just wanted to say is like you're dumb and that's great. If you fe- find a woman who is a sub, that's great. Be really fucking careful in the way in which you suggest to a woman that she ought to be your sub or that because you're a dom she would be letting you down if she's not submissive because being a submissive and being a woman puts you in a position of vulnerability it just does and so like you need to make sure 100% that you are not coercing women into being submissive like and it's ty- it like yeah and yeah. I think that it like it's just a communication thing, but I really want to make clear that although we're both like we're, we're subs and we yeah. love it, and we lo- that's yeah. not all women. That's and so true. Maybe you like that you think she's super fucking hot and you like have a real connection, but if she's not into it, she's not into it. And that stuff changes as well, you know. Yes. One day you can be sub, and one day you just don't want to have sex at all, and or and you know, or you're just a bit I don't know. Maybe want to be more dominant that day or whatnot, and they should not feel bad that they are losing that they're not enacting that particular role. You know, but yeah. So these are things that are very, very much fluid. It seems to me like you're somewhat on top of it. We're hoping that we can sort of extend that message. Something that I do want to talk about. I'm hoping at some point maybe we can get that question. I don't know. That's a bit of a um, I don't know. A, a, something I'd like to think about in the future are dom and sub relationships. What so that's mean? like that's that's you know that's outside of bed, right? It's when Ooh, you get ordered to do yeah. things, right? And like just <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, no, but it, it's fascinating. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, if just... you want to ask about that, please do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, whether that means you know that just that that, and actually, I have been the dom in that in the past. Enjoyed it profusely. Yes. Yes, not going to go into more detail, but I have been, yes, and it's actually extremely fucking fun. Um, I would do, it would be interesting to, yeah, to, to, to have that reverse on that, but then, you know, it can go from like the meal that you order to university that you go to, you know, the, the spectrum is huge actually. Mm. And basically, I know to those that don't really know what that is, I suppose it's an agreement between, I guess, two people can be more, I don't know, um, where I suppose the submissive partner partner that in in that sense i suppose in a relationship just whether that means you know at certain points or throughout the relationship just pretty much does anything that the dom tells them to and on the, no, obviously that also is very much caveated uh, caveated i don't know um sorry yeah, sure. english third language uh with things like that has it should never be about who I spend time with or it should never be who I'm dating or not. Yes. Domination should never become like abusive behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, like again, this is of course, of course, yeah, of course. We want to say this like, stuff just because we are also really we recognize that what we're doing right now is quite a risky thing and yeah. we want to really make yeah, it clear yeah, yeah, these yeah, principles. Sure. That's why we keep caveating. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's really, really important. So yeah, that it can't be it can't become abusive or manipulative and that sort of stuff. This person cannot like cut you out of your friends and family and that sort of thing. These are all the boundaries, of course, that you put in place before you start anything like this, you know. But these are more just sort of I don't know, practical or fun or kinky things. But they don't have basically they don't have to be sexual sexual at all. No. Yeah, yeah, that's something that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. anyway, yeah, please yeah. ask us about that. <laughs> and anything else you have in mind? Yes, uh, there's a curious cat link underneath. Uh, we'll be seeing one of my tweets. We'll post there. it again anyway yeah. after well, the show. Well, after the show, definitely. But even if you want to do it throughout the show, um, yeah. Shall we move on, we to, move on to the next question? question? Oh yes, my God, it's again. been half an hour. We've only done two. Oh crap! So we bang on. Apologies, but yeah. you're in our living room. What can we do? Yeah, um, like, yeah. Right, so I'm going to now do a little check as to if everything is okay, and then uh, I read out the next question, yep. I suppose. And, yeah, if you okay. want to... I'll you, do my, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my stand-up routine. <laughs> um, hello, if you're just tuning in, this is the NHS for Lefties with Rowan and Marianne. Marianne is doing some technical things I don't know about, so I'm here... Um, looking at my granddad's book collection. Here's a bust of Lenin. I've never asked him about it. I might just do a little check over there. I'll okay. give it to you in a moment. Um, I must have more jokes under my belt. Okay. A 
queer feminist w- comedian, a queer feminist comedian walks into the bar because it's set too damn low. It's a thinker. <laughs> that was a really condescending thing to say. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not a stand-up comedian anymore. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. Right. Thanks so much. But right, I'm just going to see... Nine viewers, so we dropped two. Oh, oh. sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Okay. Maybe if I take my top... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Look, as we said, we're oh, not perfect. We're not perfect. Hell. Sometimes Jesus we make jokes about taking our top <laughs> Okay, and on that note, okay, <laughs> okay this was <laughs> go, okay, go back to being serious. <laughs> Thank you again for a brilliant question. Uh, so, again, it's, yeah, all right, I'm going. Do you have any recommendations for good lefty non-fiction books as burgeoning little lefty who wants to get better informed and isn't really sure where to start? Thank you so much for asking. Again, this is, this is just... So wonderful that people put their trust in us. Legends. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. I don't really feel guilty about not having read enough. <laughs> no, no, mate. Like, you should... This is a first class honors master's person at... I got a 2-1. No, you got a first. A master's. First. Oh, my, my master's. master's. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, please, don't put yourself down, babes. I'm actually <laughs> really hot, so I actually do want to take the jacket off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is okay. that bad politics? No, that's good politics. Look, 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 I'll do a Kim Kardashian look. No, when I... Oh, oh. Let's take this off. Oh, oh, oh God. I'm sure it sounds really good. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. nice. Oh, yeah, like this guy just gave me his jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so, my wrapping my Clapton CFC. Yes. Okay, so good lefty non-fiction books. So, I was trying to think about this. Which is a good set to start. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, okay, for me, like, I, I'm, you know, I'm an internet kid. I got most of my analysis through reading, through reading online articles and zines. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm embarrassed too. Um, <laughs> but I would say one book that had a huge impact on me in terms of, like, anti-capitalist feminist analysis would be Caliban and the Witch, which is a, like, on the surface, it's kind of an account of the relationship between the witch trials in the 17th century and the birth of capitalism and the exclusion of women from like uh what the workplace and it's fucking fantastic and timeless and brilliant in terms of like early anarchist texts i kind of was thrown in at the deep end with my ex-boyfriend giving me armed joy by banana um which has such motivational mes- messages as to shoot journalists in the kneecaps, not endorsing it, not saying it's wrong, just saying that's what they says. Are you okay to post these as comments underneath our yeah, sure. underneath our live stream or something, so that yeah. you know? Because because I imagine you know if you're just listening it to now, yeah, it's hard to remember. Hard to remember. <coughs> Other th- Books. I mean, I have read books. <laughs> what books have I read? I read like I've made a mess, so this oh is God. bad. This is gonna be a new book out again. <laughs> no, I thought it was the, 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 the bits. <laughs> <laughs> all right, come on, you do it then. I'm okay. clearly failing. Maybe it will inspire me. <laughs> so first of all, um, two secrets. And oh God, I'm so losing my mystique on this. This is really bad. You're all gonna. Th- you probably all think that I'm, like clever and read things, but actually, no, 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 I do. <laughs> No, no, I will say I have, and I'll tell you what I have. But also, two little tips. Number one, read review, not even reviews, but read basically other people writing about certain books. Like, I mean, most yeah. of my knowledge on Adorno, and a flipping guest lecture on it. Yeah, 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 is exactly. Like, Podcasts and reading about people yeah. writing about Adorno. But like, reading like blog posts about most of the like major dense, densely written philosophers have like given me enough like cred and knowledge. Like yeah, there don't believe the hype. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, reading is for nerds anyway. <laughs> yeah, but no, but like like I like no, reading, but also there's only so much time in the day, and instead of spending three months reading one reading Capital, you could Capital is a good read. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but like there are. 
But in terms of Marx, for instance, 1844 manuscripts. Mm -hmm. So this is a very good start in terms of in terms of Marx. So 1844 manus manuscripts. I would really say that those are that's a good intro. Um, so I will say what sort of what has influenced me. So. Okay, this sort of goes in two parts. The way that I got sort of caught by the by the beauty and hype of, of I guess, anarchism and, and 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 the way that our life could be has been through well, when I was like thirteen, fourteen, it was through crime thing books because they do have that. Yes, side. they're brilliant. No, yeah, like I mean, for, 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 for like baby 14, fourteen year olds, yeah, yeah, for baby anarchists. That one on the the housing one, the housing. Oh, okay, is that not, oh, that's the pro dot info. That's not them. They just have a similar aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's when you're a teenager. Like, don't go there now mm. because they're they're flipping, they're classist, and like yeah. uh, they're tedious lifestyle but is bullshit really for pretty. rich kids. But they're they're pretty. But basically, so that's when you, we sort of begin when you're a kid. But what they're covering is basically situationism, and situationism mm -hmm. has that also really lovely side of seduction into politics. Oh, and I, I would to say talk about seduction with the BDSM question. Uh -huh. Tune in next week for me to talk about <laughs> seduction. But basically, it's so obviously uh, Guy Debord's Society of the Spectacle, yes. and where you know Van Ingem's inventing the future. And actually, there's a really beautiful book that it's an, I don't know I'm. This course of saying it was actually published by Freedom, but I'm not sure. But it's definitely in the Freedom Bookshop um, in London. Uh, that is called Revolution of Everyday Life, which mm -hmm, has mm -hmm. the best sort of bits of situations. Isn't that, in it? Isn't that also Vanagon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like it has also other bits from other people. It's just mm. like a beautiful sort of collage. They definitely do sell that at Freedom. Yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful sort of collage of like inspiring sort of things. But look, but yeah, that's really that's good. just sort of stuff around seduction. That's not real. I don't know, like. It's not real politics. No, it's you know it's but a certain. That's what you want, like like that's a, that's a political perspective. There's also like histories of like political uprisings and things. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. There's a, that's an intro to certain things. For me, it has been, anyways. Mm -hmm. But then you know, because I'm really interested in I guess cultural hegemony and um, sort of ways of 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 influencing that. Then I would definitely uh, inf Gramsci. then yeah, then Gramsci obviously yeah. goes into that, and that's prison notebooks. Mm -hmm. I read some Stuart Hall. They're both very accessible. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, Stuart Hall's a great oh, beginner. Wait. Actually. I have made a mistake. Revolution of Everyday Life is Van Ingem's book, yeah. but Leaving the Twentieth Century is oh, the I don't book know that, that one. Leaving the Twentieth Century. That's the that's the book that has all the cute situationist bits. Oh, Apologies. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Fuck that up. Right. Um, that's by Christopher Gray. Yes, it's basically a, he sort of curates a, a, a lovely sort of. Um, I say sort of too much. I need to sort that out, sort of. Okay, I'm gonna search it up. Um, and then Revolutions in Reverse by David Graeber was a good book for me to read. He just bitches about a lot of the left that it's great. I know David Graeber is problematic in certain ways. Oh, I don't know. I know he's a favorite art, like he's a favorite target of many. But actually, I, 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 don't, I don't target he's him. Great. I don't have. I any think his. Well, I, I, I really, issues. really disagree with his um, analysis around pre prefigurative politics. Okay, um, that's no. Uh, he bought me enough gin and tonics for me to like. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Actually, I, I actually really think Revolutions from Reverse is a good book. And he's a very accessible writer as there. well, which yes. is a good thing yes, about yes, him. Yes. I'll give him that. And once Chomsky dies, he's going to be somehow the most famous anarchist in, uh, in the oh world. So, so, so basically, we have to get on that life somehow. Um, and then a few publishers, of course, Verso Books and Pluto Press, AK, and. Um, yeah, obviously freedom. But I would say Pluto are the most accessible because they just write the shortest books. Yeah, Zero used to be part of this yeah, unless, 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 until oh, until know. until they started publishing uh, people like Angela Nagel and a few other mm. weird old righty bullshitters. So, fuck you, Zero. Oh, I would say no, like, like do we have a problem with John Holloway? Don't know is what that is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, I would say a book that I read um, a few years ago that's like a quite fun intro to like fuck capitalism is Crack Capitalism by John Holloway. It's written in a very flowery, cute way of like. If we only unite, then the colossus of capitalism will crumble under our collective strength. But it's also like got some nice stuff about like <coughs> sitting in a park as a means of like fuck work and stuff. And it's got like it kind of makes politics seem possible and accessible. But it's like very romantic. But it's, it's a fun it's a fun intro read, I think. To, yeah. Like, Anti-capitalism in a general everyday sense. We're talking intro books here, anyways. Like we're not going to pretend to be like all, you know, like. Oh. Yeah, these are intro books, and also inventing the future by Alex Williams and Nick Chernak. It's excellent. It's sort that. of a, it's a, I, I've got it somewhere else. I would definitely um, good. It's a sort of it's a really empathetic critique of 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 
the lack of ambition in the horizontalist left, mm. but without bringing in like party politics. It really is just sort of inspiring of, of, of how we need to really, really step up the game in, 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 in the 21st century, you know? I thought, I thought it was really good. And then, like, I'm also just thinking in, like, specific fields. Like, obviously, I opened with, like, a kind of feminist analysis book, but also there's, like, Undoing Border Imperialism, which is, like, a quite good intro to, like, No Borders politics. Um, like, again, you can get it in, like, Freedom or, like, Houseman's or whatever. And also, I just had another one in my mind of a different social... Oh, yeah, and also just, like... Okay, I know this sounds kind of hackneyed, and it's not really anarchist. Well, it is a bit anarchist. It's like is Homage to Catalonia by George Orwell is like a really accessible account yeah. of the Spanish Civil War, and it reads like a novel, but it's like non-fiction in the sense it's an autobiography. Great shout out. And it's it, yeah, it's fun, and it also like he has this great bit at the back where he lists the different political parties and what their motivation is, like external to the main narrative that he's doing. And so like as an intro to like anarchist politics since the Spanish Civil War, and like someone made a joke to me the other day that like anarchist politics has only since the Spanish Civil War, like that's. A good intro read. Yeah, nice one. And, um, yeah. Good. We'll try and list all the ones we remember from that. Yeah, and also, yeah, we're going to post all of that underneath the thread, yep. hopefully, so so that should be of use. Um, should we, like, call it a day? Because we've been on for 45 minutes. Yeah, and but there's the last question. I know, but... but it's a complicated one. Well, it's not complicated. Basically, um, Well, I feel like we should answer because someone actually asked us that. But I, I think we could say that we want to get more information before we answer it, and we'll hopefully have an answer next week. Okay, should we tell the viewers somehow as to... Okay, the, the next question is a, um, is a question about... Uh, it's to do with the relationship between a client and a sex worker, and neither of us engage in sex work, and so we're not ignoring this question, but we're trying to talk to some sex work organisations and people who do sex work to try and make sure that, like, either that they can give us an answer to give, or that we can refer the questioner to other resources where they can find us out because we don't feel comfortable answering this ourselves with our, our lack, with our lack of background. So hopefully by next week we'll have either some resources to give the questioner or an answer that we can that has is from people that do sex work that we can let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're definitely going to be on it. So yeah, thank we've you for watching. Around. Thank you so much that you've asked this and 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 we're going to be with you very yes. soon. Um, anyways, thank you so much. Yeah, I, mean, I hope it? this was. I don't know. I feel like. Yeah, it was longer than I thought. Yeah, yeah, it was great. But for us. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, now I just feel like we should just... No. What? Get down to the deep end of discussing all of our sad exes. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get some content next week as well, now. Yeah, okay, okay. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Tune in next time. Please send us some questions. Yeah, also send us feedback if there's things we can yes. do better. Like, if you want to tell me that I'm talking too fast, please do. We both do that. Issue. I do that. I get this all the time with Left Left Up and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, anyways, this is an attempt to... For the left to be less emotionally oppressed, yeah. basically, and not afraid and sexually to ask oppressed, questions. not afraid to ask questions, be you know sex positive, but also just care, caring at the same time, and um, yeah, also just yeah, a place for like I don't know, just cis dudes to just feel comfortable about asking because we have loved a lot of you, we have had sex with a lot of you, we have had fascinations about a lot of you, I did, I have been, I, I, I care for you, I want all the best to some yeah, of you, Absolutely. and I, it hurts me to think that, and obviously I'm saying this as a huge fucking feminist, obviously, but like, I just, I don't know, it hurts me to think that there is not a growing generation of like, that there is a growing generation of like dudes that could potentially be fucking awesome and make other women s or men so fucking happy and that they're going the wrong way, you know? I just want for you guys to make us so happy and hopefully we can do the same thing at you as well. Because, yeah, man, like, this is what the world sort of goes around. Like, yeah, yeah, love. And I sound like a hippie now. This is the time where we no, turn No, but it's off. true. Like, in order to be, like, revolutionaries or whatever, you need to have, like, anger, but you also need to have, like, solidarity and camaraderie. And, like, although I'm a hardcore feminist and although, like, men piss me off a hell of a lot of the time... Yeah. We kind of need them in the long term. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I mean... And I want them to be goodies. Like, yeah. I don't want to be, like, fuck you, fuck off to the, like, Jordan Peterson kind. Yeah, 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 exactly. I want them to, like... 
make us come in really good ways you know what i mean it's basically all uh, like it's all basically an investment into ourselves we want you to like <laughs> treat us well <laughs> we'll treat you back well i'd like to yeah. think yeah like compassion well you know yeah we're like behind all the cynicism and all of that we're flipping romantics and we want to share that around and yeah, yeah and i hope you can be that in this journey the the two and a half people that watched this <laughs> top tip <laughs> Buying a girl flowers never hurts. Never hurts. Never, never hurts. hurts. Repeat this. Repeat because I feel hurts. like you said it Buying quite. Buying a girl flowers never hurts. Like never. Unless she's got an allergy. Yeah, yeah. Ask about that. But that'd be weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a coughing fit. That's probably the, yeah, the time okay. we had. Um, thank you so much for tuning in to the NHS with Rowan and Marianne. <coughs> we'll be back next Tuesday at 8pm. Please send in your questions to the Curious Cat link on Marianne's Twitter. The reason why we're doing it through Marianne's Twitter is because she has billions of followers and I have 12 and they're all my mum. So. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Well, wait now. You have to still say something while I turn it off. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Oh, look how badass Miriam's chair is. <laughs> it's so much more badass than mine, but my granddad made mine, or possibly my great granddad. I have nothing else to say. Um. Woohoo!